Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the Superstars of Wrestling Review Series. We got over 200 and uh, I think it's close to 240 of these by this batch's end, something like that. And over 2100 audios for your listening pleasure. Uh, hoping to double that next year. My goal, my ultimate goal would be 5,000 by the end of 2022, but who knows, we'll get there if my schedule allows. Anyway... Uh, this is the, um, this is the, uh, October 20, uh, October 1st edition. Uh, we open with a Razor Ramon squash match. Rare these days, Razor kind of, I guess, in rarefied air, having been a multi, having been a Intercontinental Champion by this time. Wouldn't say he's not on TV, but he's on TV a little less than he used to be from coming into 92 and through 93 here in, in the beginning of October 1994. Of course, Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, is still a big deal and remains with the company through the beginning of 96. Not to say that he doesn't do squash matches, but it seems that he's not on TV as often or nearly as often uh, during this span of time. Enhancement talent looks pretty impressive that he's going up against, not in terms of stature, but just in terms of musculature. And uh, Hall manages to hit a couple of uh, shoulder tackles, basic things, takes him up and over, and ultimately hits uh, some pretty basic things along the way. Uh, Hall, of course, the uh, Intercontinental Champion, and as the, um, as the Intercontinental Champion does get a little bit of TV time upon occasion, but it's, again, rarefied air. The basics of the Hall thing, the over-the-shoulder fallaway slam, the um, back suplex tie up with the abdominal stretch on the mat and other basic maneuvers proving that scott hall is again aka razor ramon again very dominant red tyler is his adversary for today a choke slam which i always liked scott hall choke slams they they were they looked good eventually the razor's edge and the victory um and uh razor kind of looks I don't want to say unchallenged in the match, but the idea to get him over pretty aggressively there. Then we go to a highlight package of the uh, Shawn Michaels and uh, Diesel winning the Tag Team Championships hype for them. They're talking about uh, someone come challenge us. There's no other team that's as good as us, and they cut a promo to that effect. Lots of hype. Uh around the idea that they are an under-challenged team. Abe Knuckleball Schwartz, a.k.a. Steve Lombardi, painted up like a baseball. He's up next. Interesting gimmick choice, but if you know the time, this is the uh, strike for the 1994 Baseball World Series time. And so, uh, somebody, some say Lombardi, some say McMahon, anybody, but uh, anyhow... Uh, comes up with that suplex off the ropes uh, kind of like a slingshot by Abe Knuckleball Schwartz on Ron Coleman Coleman or Ron Cumberland I'm sorry uh, Cumberland is a pretty regular enhancement talent at the time um, slide through the legs baseball slides instead of his face and a big body slam there by Abe Knuckleball Schwartz Schwartz does jumping jacks afterwards and basically uh, dressed up like he's in a, uh, you know, like probably, what, early 1900s pinstripe baseball thing. They talk more about the charity that are be that's being done for kids with a bunch of celebrities. They seem to be doing that every week. Also, a highlight package of Bob Backlund uh, and his uh, losing of the championship, the snapping of Bob Backlund. Lots more highlight packages at the time. Uh, and they, they run through him attacking people on Raw, uh, Backlund promising that he wants to be champion again, uh, Backlund again turning in July, and kind of getting ready for the Survivor Series uh, challenge of Bret Hart again, this time as a heel. Mabel makes his way out, beginning singles competition here in 1994. Uh, black, and, black and purple is Mabel, and Mabel's also 500 pounds. So trying to get people up doing kind of the womp there it is rap gimmick from the time period with a specialized rap from Mabel. 
as it were, and uh, Mabel obviously, you know, wearing yellow and purple, is going to get some interesting run there, and uh, a squash match, literally, including Mabel doing squash motions in the corner, among other things, Mabel hitting a back elbow and other offensive maneuvers, defeating um, George Anderson with a spin kick in quick order. Spin kick from Mabel is pretty intense. Uh, and then we go to um, a Jim Neidhart enhancement talent match here uh, soon thereafter. But again, the spin kick by Mabel. If you've never seen Mabel at the time, a.k.a. Big Vis, Viscera, Big Daddy V, whatever you want to call it, putting on a chin lock in the middle of a uh, enhancement match, probably not necessary, but uh, they're kind of going there uh, just to slow matches down. Jim Neidhart against Ike Anderson, uh, maybe related to George. Anyway, Neidhart uh, punches and kicks and uh, uh, really basic stuff, maybe a body slam or two, but Neidhart at the time really was not... Uh, particularly good in the ring, uh, more a secondary to Owen Hart at the time and kind of a favor for his time uh, as the, uh, in the Hart Foundation in the, you know, um, earlier 80s, Jim Neidhart at the time dealing with some alcohol and drug-related issues uh, and uh, going off, off bet a little bit and uh, 1994, not his time, winning with a modified camel clutch uh, the Undertaker again getting ready. The big, huge casket for Yokozuna coming up for the Survivor Series. They have officially announced that. Also, the Bushwhackers return here. Bushwhackers still here in October 94. Did not realize they were here that long. Uh, for some reason, thought they left in late 92, early 93. I think they did actually do a good bit of work for the IWCCW promotion out of Upper Maine and the upper parts of New England. Uh, anyway, the Bushwhackers in a squash match here in late 94. And uh, obviously that is where they're happiest and, uh, you know, getting matches with the heavenly bodies around the country, maybe something like that. But not really getting a lot of play at uh, nature. Although, having seen them on the... Um, independent scene, uh, basically the battering ram on uh, Rick Warner, Tom Stone are the two individuals who are taking the punishment there, and ultimately the Bushwhackers, you know, punch kick, super basic offense, nothing to write home about, doesn't need to be though, when you're getting that much play time, and the battering ram is your victory. Um, Todd Pettengill out, basically promoting the live event experience, also the life-size Undertaker blow-up, floaty type thing. And uh, then we go to Gary Jackson facing off against IRS. IRS, who has joined the Million Dollar Corporation, as it were, and uh, takes his man down, gets a couple of wrestling maneuvers, but more chokes, punches, kicks, and basically the leaping clothesline, the big finish. For IRS, Gary Jackson selling around after also getting his uh, leg and knee ripped at and torn apart. And IRS manages to get as much of a uh, continual continual offensive maneuver series there. Uh, the uh, Also kind of a modified uh, sit out there. Anyway, uh, we kind of close out with some hype videos and promises of Lex Luger getting answers from Tatanka in the coming weeks. Also, Luger going to captain the Survivor Series team, which we will be uh, going through in the next several weeks there. We will be back with more right after this.